I was like, wait a minute, what's happening right now? Um, and she said that if the abuse of Kiki has been going on for two years, then why would she have a baby with him? So again, we're putting this, we're putting her, her being violated, her being terrorized and all of these things all back on her. Because in other words, in general, she chose wrong. And even if she found out she was pregnant, she didn't exactly, she didn't say it straight out, but she's like, why would you have that baby? Um, I don't care why she had the baby. I don't care what the hell she did. I don't care. Y'all don't understand. I don't care. That Darius, that has, that's a whole separate thing from the fact that this motherfucker terrorized her what does any of that got to do with him beating on this girl what does any of that got to do with him violating her trying to violate her physically her emotionally her fucking um um uh, mentally just a terrorist there's a, th but see, there's another through line. See, everybody's trying to hide the fact that men of this type have abdicated their responsibility. And we think that by covering for the abdication of their responsibility, that somehow a person who has abdicated their responsibility will somehow be inspired to step up. Mm -hmm. That's not how any of this works. Darius and Saronis Jackson's mother, she has two, uh, at least allegedly, quite abusive sons, actually. Abusive, unstable, spreading STDs around with their behavior, uh, destroying Black women's careers as collateral damage if the insecure situation is what it is purported to be, allegedly. We don't have all the court documents on that yet. But Somehow, many of us seem to think that if we pick up the burden of the abdication and we just get better and do something better, then somehow the men will be inspired to be better than what they are. People do not change until they're ready. And human nature being what it is, unfortunately, the nature of men in particular, a man will play God until the check gets hard enough for him to uh, realize either one of two things going to happen. Uh, either he has perished literally from his foolery, or he is humbled enough to look up and realize, no, that's not my spot to be in. That's generally how that works. As Black women, we don't have control over anything except occasionally one of those in self defense, occasionally. That's something that happens every day. But the thing we cannot do is, L let me also just back up into, into history. You know, we, we grew up in a society that's very dominated by uh, Greco-Roman thought. And in Greco-Roman thought and also in Victorian thought, uh, the idea was all of the good things in life, the arts, the sciences, the graces and the muses, the Greeks and the Romans recognized that a lot of the brilliance in those things came from women. And so they would talk about someone's going to be my muse or my inspiration. Um, they assigned a lot of their goddesses to those things, actually. If you go back and you look at your ACH, if you go back and you look at your Greco-Roman mythology, you'll see that. So then men took this. And but the problem about this, and this is this also happens in Christian circles about when we argue about whether women can be pastors or not. No matter how you stand on that, what you don't need is spiritual mama's boys. Because what you get from this Greco Roman, the, the Victorians said that, okay, we know man is a savage. We know British men in particular, since they're out there savaging a third of the world. But it's a Victorian woman's job to civilize him. Never mind 
because his daddy was savage, his great grandfather was savage, his grandfather, all these people, they, they have a hundred year wars out here. So what men have done is they will want to pretend on one hand to be gods and on the other hand externalize all responsibility for them to be more than savages onto women. That is the combined. And I've, I've just condensed 2,500 years worth of bad thought in male-female relationships into just a few minutes. So by the time this rolls all the way down to black women who were not bought into this with any depth of knowledge at all, we are the, unfortunately, until we choose otherwise, are the legatees of some very, very bad European ideas on this. So we think that we can be someone's muse and inspiration. I heard a, a recording of an old white minister who said that, you know, if you marry the right man, you will be his muse and his inspiration. I'm like, sir, you are a Christian and you do not even realize what you just did. But further down, in our community, because we did not get a chance to learn where any of this came from, basically black men like this want to get back on the tits, but also have access to the pearly gates, if you will, um, as confidence with love puts our, um, we, they want access to the diamond. Basically, it, you know, in Greek, they call this the Oedipus complex, but basically they want to be, uh, count, uh, Auntie Love will say the word for you if you want, but they want to be M efforts, literally. Yes. They want to have a woman who is going to take care of all the adult responsibilities that they can also dominate sexually so they can feel like a grown man while operating at the level of boys. And because if you go back far enough in history and Auntie Love better on this than I am, all your almost all your great matriarchal figures, you go back up far enough, look like Auntie Love and I. I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, even Mary, up until about 1638, was recommended as the Black Madonna. So people couldn't even conceive less than what is it, four, 500 years ago, of there being a great matriarch without it actually being the image of an African woman. This is just a fact. This it doesn't matter how I feel about it as a Christian. You do your world history, it is what it is. It, 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 nobody could even conceive it because of how far back. You have to go, as, as Auntie Love's always reminded me, black women have been worshiping God as it's back to the beginning of reported history. You can feel any way you want about that, but it is what it is. So instead of, though, having the reverence part, it's like that terrible man who attacked Carlicia Hood talked about swearing on his grandmama that he gonna kill this woman. I'm like, wait, what? Wait, what? what? So on one hand, you acknowledge that the black woman is the source of everything, but you then blaspheme because that's going to be whether it's confidence with love version of blasphemy or mine. You're going to blaspheme either way because the minute you decide to try to access that power to destroy another woman who could be a grandmother, a mama, the minute you take that image and then use it as your reason to destroy another image. But, but this is what happens, because the other thing is you're supposed to respect your mother and not grape her. In our community, this level of confusion, and this is why, because many of us as Black women have not just accepted this. It is. It took me 36 and a half years, because like I said, I was blessed. My father, uncle, grandfathers, outstanding men, to understand that this is just not the way it's going to be, and to go through the grief process of accepting that it is what it is and that and, but my father actually was pretty consistent from about 12 on that you're just not going to be able to find like grown men so that never put me or my mom or my sister under the burden of having to try to pretend that things were not who they were he got to protect his children he said i'm not handing a stradivarius to a gorilla no so we never had to be under that burden but the majority of black women have been under this burden because we were miseducated with European stuff that ain't even working for them. And then this other level of grown boys wanting to be men, but they no more can handle the responsibilities of life than they could have when they were, well, I'm, I'm going to be respectful. There are some 12 and 14 year old boys who have done better. Carlicia Hood's son was 14. And this is really hard for me because I have kids in my Sunday school class that can make better decisions than some of these men. I, 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 I'm just, I'm just like, but they also know that Auntie D don't play that. 
everything I taught you, you're responsible for. Yeah. And there's not enough, as Black women, this is the attitude that we're going to begin to have to adopt. Darius's mother is tragic. She's hoping that she can make her sons into the man their father wasn't. What she is doing, her choices are reinforcing the same behavior, as opposed to her saying, allegedly, I know somebody who it would, if her son tried that, it, it would probably be his last day on earth, allegedly. And I heard this by the side of the road. It, it, but see, if we're trying to make them into the men we want them to be without recognizing they have a right to their own choices and they have a right to all their own consequences, we coddle them into the next iteration. And then our daughters, our nieces, our students, uh, our sisters, our younger sisters end up in the same situation. So we have to hold ourselves accountable for what? Coddling these men. But every man ever who decided to raise his fist against anyone else, no, he chose to do that. Like I said before, men who fight over women, and I'm going to add fight with women, do it because they want the fight. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing else. And so we just have to, part of this conversation is just like, we're going to say this stuff aloud. We're we going to clear some space. If, you know, Since we up here as the aunties, your auntie's going to clear a little space for you. We're going to say it aloud so that you have room to look around at what you actually see and stop making excuses for your part. Your part is only, you didn't make anybody be brutal to anybody else, but your part is see it for what it is and move accordingly. That's your choices. And we're gonna give you some other choices to go with, but goes with those choices when we get there. But no, I, at some point you gotta call a spade a spade and a terrorist a terrorist. And it's hard yes. because again, we have been acclimatized 2,500 years of foolery have been forced on us, but it's 2023, y'all. Leave it on this side. Let all bad information be forgot and never brought to mind. It's time to do it, y'all. It's November 17th. You got six weeks to unlearn the foolery. Mm -hmm.